I'm Andrea. And I'm Jamie. And this is the Mockingbird Fiber Podcast. You can find us online. I'm the Nitpicky on Instagram and Ravelry. And I am Turkey Love 12 on Ravelry and Notorious W underscore WIP on Instagram. Yes. And we are Mockingbird Fiber Co. on Instagram. And you can find our yarns at MockingbirdFiberCo.com. We have filmed this mm. <laughs> so many times. Um, yeah. The first time we weren't in focus at all. We have a new setup. Yeah. I think it's going to work. I'm hoping we're filming at night so the shadows are a little bit weird, but um, I think it's going to be better than it has been. I hope so. <laughs> um, so, but we're going to talk real quick about our last shop update. If you want to show some yarn that we've oh, sure. done. This is our turpentine chaser colorway. It's so pretty mauves and blues with some brown speckling and that's on our scrummy sock base this is space cowboy got some purples and oranges and peaches and this is shown on our scrummy sock base so pretty these are all in the shop right now mm -hmm. this is bohemian rhapsody i was really inspired by <laughs> The movie that just recently came out. Well, it's been out for a while, but um, my husband and I just watched it. Oh, really? Just a couple weeks ago. Oh, we but, saw yeah. it in theaters. I love it. I'm a big Queen fan, so. Yeah, and um, this is Waterfalls on Bouncy BK. We also have that one on Staple Sock. And then um, I'll show my sweater really quick because this is a um, new design from Annie Hodge. She's this bird knits on Instagram. I love her design so much, and she designed this in our rustic sock base and it's sorry <laughs> um it's a three-quarter length sleeve and it's just like a nice roomy pullover and um I knit it with our rustic sock held double which is what the pattern's written for and you can also knit it in um DK weight just you know held single mm -hmm. so we're gonna have an update with rustic sock and timber DK which are our tweed bases um rustic sock is a BFL nylon and timber DK is a merino nylon. Um, I love the BFL though. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's one of my favorite bases ever. I've knit so many things with it. Um, but this is our new colorway called Ocean Avenue. And it is stunningly gorgeous. I love it so much. I want this pullover in that color mm, too. Yeah. Uh, I love it. We also have this available on our staple sock base yeah. right now in the shop in too. The shop. And then Purple Haze, which is blowing out just a little bit, but it's just like a dusty purple color. And I love dusty colors. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they're my favorite. Okay, so we're going to offer, um, if you get a sweaters quantity, we're going to offer um, a discount, 15% mm -hmm. off. And uh, we're going to have that. Probably next week, whenever she releases the pattern, we'll go ahead and do the update. Um, and it'll be pre order so you can get any color you want. Mm -hmm. We have several colors we've done now in these bases. Um, they're all like, a, you know, solids, um, tonals. But this is our new colorway, Copacabana, if I didn't say that. And um, the only mod that I made was to knit the sleeves. Um, I did more decreases than the pattern calls for because I wanted my sleeves tighter. Um, so, because th the body's pretty boxy the uh, fourth size out of eight sizes so it's the medium and it took me right under four skeins and I think the way that it's written is for like the largest size might take six like five or six but the smallest through like the size that I knit take four skeins um, which I think is reasonable and I mean you hold it double it's really soft um, and I just love it it's like cozy and um, one of my friends on Instagram was talking to me about how people don't always say the size they knit and mm -hmm. they have the tendency to talk about how huge their sweater is, but your huge might be someone else's normal. Right. And so it's important to say the size that you knit and to not talk bad about the size that you right. knit because, you know, it is big. It's, it's an oversized pullover. But some people like theirs tighter. And right. so, you know. It's all relative. Yeah, it is. It's stuff. Yeah. yeah, and it's just, I feel like we need to get away from talking about 
oh my gosh, this sweater's huge, and you're like 90 pounds. You know, it's like, to that to someone else, that's a normal right. size sweater. Right. Anyway, so off my soapbox, um, and it's a fourth out of eight sizes, and I didn't swatch, of course, but it worked out. It's just nice and roomy, and it looked really wide and really short when I was walking it, but the drape on it is just so good. I just love it. I'll be posting pictures to Instagram soon so you can kind of see the whole thing, but anyway, so yeah, we'll be having our update, and we have yarn in the shop now as well. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, I'll talk about one of my FOs. No, you go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh. I just have so many. I hate for you to just oh, like no, do yours okay. and then I like do a million. Oh, honey. Ooh. These are my February socks. And I have knit these in our Mockingbird uh, Friends Club colorway that was inspired by Monica's apartment. And these are the Hermione Everyday Socks. And I will briefly show the heel. But I messed up <laughs> on the heel and knit it inside out. <laughs> I'm very, I'm not very experienced. So when I look at a pattern, I kind of take it literally. And I don't have any critical thinking right now when it comes to um, knitting and being able to tell exactly where I'm at and like exactly what it needs to be reading your knitting so basically. yeah I'm getting better yeah but for some reason I was just flying along on these and I was knitting the heel it was a different heel than I was used to it was like an eye of partridge but mm -hmm. it was like a modified eye of partridge I think mm -hmm. so it wasn't even anything that I'd ever knit before so I wasn't even thinking that my pearl purling was on the but it doesn't side. look bad either like no. I mean you can't you can hardly tell, but even so, it's just a design element. Yeah, you know, it hugs me now that I know, um, but but it's okay. I love them. I, love this, them. I loved. I really, really enjoyed this yeah, pattern. That color. So oh, and the I color. Love that color. Yeah. Yes. I am trying to save all of my friends' yarn from this year to knit twelve pairs of friends' socks next year. Wow. <laughs> we'll see if I can do it. We just dyed Phoebe, and it is. It's great. It's yes. awesome. And um, next month, April's club is going to be Chandler. So you can't get Phoebe anymore. But Chandler is our favorite. So it's going to be pretty awesome too. I'm really excited. Anyway, so is that your only FO? Okay. Um, I have finished four pairs of socks. I have my Solstice Sunset socks. Her four pairs to my one pair. No, but, okay, <laughs> these I started before Christmas. Um, and all I had to do was knit the heel. And they're shorties, and um, I've told about them before, but I just wanted them to be done because I was sick of knitting them. And um, I'm glad to have them done, and I'm wearing them. Um, the other socks I'm going to show are going in my box of socks. I'm not wearing them until next year. Um, these are just a pair of Patton's Croy socks that literally are different, two different sizes. Oh, you can't see from that side. I ran out of yarn. It is what it is, they fit. It's fine, I'm done. <laughs> um, I'm knitting from stash this year as, I mean, other than our yarn, which I've done a lot of, but anyway. I'm trying to knit from stash this year, not buy yarn that isn't ours. And um, so I had to get two pair, or like two socks out of 63 grams or something. So I ran out of yarn at the end, but that's okay. I'm glad they're done. And then my favorite socks I've probably ever knit are my A Little Less Conversation socks. This is, so this is the colorway we did last month and, um, or was it last month? It was like January, I guess, late January. Mm, late January. Um, and I love those. I just did a vanilla sock, fish lips, kiss heel, my typical. I'm thinking about like, not writing a pattern as if I'm some kind of expert sock knitter, but, like, just writing out how I knit my socks in case someone else wants to. It would be free. It's not, you know, it's not anything you pay for. But, I don't know, thinking about it, because I've kind of found my vanilla socks. Mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody's is different. I don't know. Yeah. You all want to do that. I actually was watching Wool Needles Hands, and she referenced um, one that I looked up. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be doing a vanilla sock probably. Which one do you next remember? month? Last pair of socks 
are these, um, I call them my eye swain socks because that's the colorway. These are my hand spun socks um, that my friend Christine spun this yarn so and they're pretty. so gorgeous. This is a bamboo blend, it's so soft. <laughs> I just love these. They're my favorite. These are my, they're all I have, they're all my favorite. Not all of them, but yeah. So, and then I have my Truffle Tough Cow by Jen Pack of Webster Street Knittery. I did this test knit for her. And Okay, this is Cat Sandwich Fibers, the colorful yarn you see. And then the natural yarn is a base that I was testing for um, us. That's Baby Siri Alpaca. And then the I-Cord Edging is Plucky Single in Betrothed. <sighs> Plucky Single was one of my favorite bases and they discontinued it. But anyway... Um, this was such a fun knit. Mm, I want to cast on one soon. Yeah, yeah. you should. You want to do like neutral colors. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I want to do one that's more neutral. But Which, I really love that. I would too, because this is a single loop, but then she writes it so you can make a double loop mm -hmm. as well. And I would love to have a double loop. Um, I wanted this to be double, but I ran out of time. I had other things that I needed to finish. But, um, yeah. So what are you working on? My March socks. <laughs> That are the they are cocktail socks by Taylor um, with little needles hands. I love that color so and much. And this is her um, color also. It's one of her lucky strikes in a BFL DK. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's kind of a what would you call it? Lace. Lace kind of. Um, and I wouldn't choose to do this, but I kind of had to because they're the only needles that I had that you let me borrow <laughs> that are 9-inch circulars. I'm actually not hating the 9-inch circulars, but I think that I would not choose this particular pattern on 9-inch circulars. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I do really, really love this pattern. And I'm anxious to try a different pattern, maybe a vanilla sock on 9-inch mm -hmm. circulars and see if I like it better. Yeah, I um, did my... Um, these socks on my circulars and I hated every single stitch. Like, I hated it. I'm glad you're liking it, though. Yeah, it's a challenge sometimes just because this is already kind of a... I don't know how to describe it. Like, but you said it has twisted stitches. Yeah, it kind of has twisted stitches and it's kind of a... more than just a straight knit. So mm -hmm. it's kind of that in combination with trying to get used to doing it on such a short cable is kind of hard. Mm -hmm. But, um... But I'm really enjoying they're, it, and I love yeah, them. Yeah, they're really, really yeah. pretty. Good job, Taylor. Yes. <laughs> we love Taylor. Um, yeah, I'm working on a hat, I guess a good segue. Um, I'm working on a hat for the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along. And March is um, a unique construction or unconventional construction. So this is like, uh, okay, so... You knit short rows and do the decreases. So the hat's basically, you're knitting it sideways, and then this folds up so it's like a double brim kind of. Does that make any sense? Not to me, but... Well, anyway, it's really cute. It's called the Survivalist Hat on Ravelry, and I'll link everything. But this is a skein of Madeline Tosh, um, Tosh Merino Light in Electric Rainbow. And it's one of my favorite colorways I've ever... It's really Like, cute. one of my favorite skeins of yarn I've ever had. But um, I didn't want to hold it single because half of the skein is like very bright and then the other half has the black speckles and um you can kind of avoid like pooling and weird weird stuff like that by holding the yarn double and so anyways it looks like this oh my gosh yeah so that's the that's the yarn i love this it's just like rainbow but like black whatever it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. So I don't know for sure that this is going to work out. It calls for DK weight on five, size 5 needles. I'm knitting on size 7 needles. Don't know why, I just am. So that's that's my current whip. And then I have this test knit that I'm doing. It's a super secret test knit for Lindsay of Lost and Fawn. And I'm knitting it in our new Ocean Avenue colorway on Russic Sock. And I can't show any of the like special design elements, but... I can just show like a generic shot of like, here's the heel flap. Um, oh, isn't that pretty? I don't know um, if that focused. I think it did for a second, but anyway. So it's a really pretty,
pattern. I'm really excited about it. And uh, I seem to stop knitting things in rustic sock. I just love it. Um, and then this is my little bag from the Prickly Alco that I talked about buying in, my, in our last podcast. Um, but the little tassel fell off. But, I mean, I have it, and I can put it back on, but it's kind of a bummer, because my other bag did the same thing. Oh, that's weird. But it's fine. And then my last whip is the Posy Shawl. And I've made a lot of progress on this. So, um, I think last time I just had the top section done. And people were like, I read online all the time about how people say that mohair is hard to work with on its own. Um, like it's sticky and it blah, 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 whatever. So I was like, I was kept putting that off cause I didn't want to deal with that. And then a few weekends ago, I was like, I'm just going to do it. And I knit the, sh the lace section in like a day and a half cause I was watching the British baking show. Oh, yeah. And um, so this is it. This is our sugar plum fairy colorway. And then dust on the bottle is this lace section. And then... Um, maybe it's cold outside is the stock in that section, but it's really pretty. It's hard to show because shawls are awkward when they're on the needles, but, um, I'm really, I'm really excited pretty. about it. But now I'm at the point where I have to use my hair colored mohair and I was going to brioche it with this. And I just don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't want to waste the mohair, but I don't think I like it because it's gonna be going like after it's I just don't think I like it with this maybe we could over dye it and make it like more chocolatey like more I don't know maybe we could try I don't like it as much as I thought I would see yeah it now that you're showing it with the shawl yeah. like I think as a concept it really didn't seem like a bad idea <laughs> because a lot of that has some brown speckles I know in it. So I thought maybe it would tie it somehow together. It kind of does. You can it. always try. Honestly, I know you don't like to, but you can honestly do your little swatch. See what it looks like. Just a little one. That's true. That way you... But I don't want to wind it. it you well, know, if I'm going to over dye it. Just wind a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I think I think she's right. I think I'm going to do that. I'm sorry. I'll swatch No, you're you. right. <laughs> oh, you will. Well, can sure. you agree? <laughs> Mm, no. <laughs> okay. Was that on my goal list this year? It was. It was cables. Yeah, it was cables. Yeah. Never but mind. you can learn brioche too. It's I easy. Could. I mean, you know, it's not, say it's easy. Like, I I mean, it is, but if I drop a stitch, like, I'm screwed. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. Anyway, so that's, but I was really pleased with my progress because I did this, I think I did both these sections in a weekend. And um, I hope it'll block out bigger because it's kind of a little bit small right now. Anyway, um, those are all my whips at the moment. So I got this book. This is Seamless Knit Sweaters in Two Weeks by Marie Green. And it is an absolutely gorgeous book. I did a full review on my um, blog, thenitpicky.com. But it just has like all these simple sweaters. Does that mean you can knit them in two weeks? Yeah, that's the goal. Okay. But and I know that sounds crazy, but like, it sounds very crazy look at this. Me. She has like this method of like getting your sweaters to fit and be wear, like something you want to wear. Mm -hmm. And honestly, a lot of times I finish a sweater and I'm kind of just like, oh, you know, like not, not necessarily that it doesn't fit, but just, I don't know, it's kind of underwhelming. This sweater was not like that. I actually like this sweater more after blocking and stuff than I did when I was knitting it. Like, bottom-up sweaters to me are such a slog. That's gorgeous. I know, yeah. I mean, Even the sweater on the front is just stunning. I just wear that every day. I so, mean, like, yeah. Yeah, that's the point. They're supposed to just be, like, everyday wearable sweaters. And um, I thought it was just going to be a book full of, like, bulky patterns, but actually it's not. There's mm -hmm. one bulky weight sweater. The rest are, like, worsted, DK. There's even some sport. Nice. And yeah, I love this cardigan too. That Isn't is that pretty. pretty. So I don't know if I have yarn for any of this now, but I'm I'm gonna see what I what I can come up with. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, I knitting this sweater. I've never knit a bottom up sweater completely. Like I knit the weekender. Um, I started it, and I got to where you split 
for your sleeves and I had dropped the stitch like 14 inches ago <laughs> on the edge, my selvage stitch. I was like, I don't know how to come back from this. <laughs> so I, I frogged it. I had net like, I had net like 15 or more inches on this sweater. And I frogged it. But they look like they're going to be huge when you're knitting on bottom up. And I'm not saying huge like I was talking about earlier. I mean like right. huge for me. For what like, you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And I was worried about that with this one. I was like, this thing just looks like it's going to be way too big for me. And then you get, you seam the shoulders and try it on and it's like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of like magic, but I definitely prefer top down sweaters, but this one worked out really, really well. And I think that hers are top down. They're seamless. So you don't have any like, I don't know if that means there's no three needle bind offs or anything. Anyway. It's a really good book. I haven't knit any of the patterns, obviously, but it's very well laid out, beautiful designs, and um, I'll put a link to my blog post if you are interested in that. And um, I think it was like, it was definitely under $15 for 20 sweater patterns. Like, a sweater pattern can run you 7 or $8, mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. So it's a good deal, and I don't buy a lot of books at all. But um, my friend Jen of Webster Street Knittery posted that on her Instagram. And I was like, I've never bought something so fast. Like, I was just like, oh, cart, done. It was on Amazon. So, yeah. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about was um, a big, like, saying on Instagram about, like, being a yarn snob and how that's a cool thing to do. Like, oh, I'm a yarn snob. I only knit with Merino. I only knit with whatever. And, um... My friend Michelle from my so-called handmade life, she has a podcast, she has a blog that I've read for years. She's just like the kindest person. And she was talking about this and I was like, you know what? It's something that I've always felt, but I feel like more people need to voice it. And Taylor from Wool Needles Hands, she knits with commercial yarn all the time. You know, she'll, it's like, but then there are people that are self-proclaimed yarn snobs and I just don't think it's okay to be a snob about anything and um you know comparing it to like wine <laughs> wine snobs like you know I'll drink my whatever two buck yeah. chuck, whatever I want to <laughs> drink like <laughs> if, if you like it do, you know knit with it it doesn't right. have to be it doesn't have to be like a $200 yeah. sweater it doesn't have to be one of the big indie dyer I mean I love them too but I can't pay two hundred dollars for right. a sweater's quantity. I can't either. No, it's all about balance. It is like I like to get single skeins, like you know, from from an indie dyer, and get get one. You know, if you go to like a fiber festival or mm -hmm. you know one of those, get like a nice single skein of a beautiful yarn and knit a pair of socks. But then when I go to knit my sweaters, and I'm not talking about like our yarn, because obviously like. I can't buy other indie dyers yarn like I can buy ours obviously because you know we get ours at wholesale <laughs> um <laughs> I mean we do and um you know I think it's okay to knit with Cascade or Barocco or whatever you want something from Joann's or Michael's even like um Patent has some really nice wool and I just I'm kind of sick of the whole I'm over the yarn snobbery because I feel like that leaves a lot of people out and um you know I haven't like when I started out I was all about the acrylic you know and once I learned better I wanted to use more wool and wool is more expensive but it doesn't have to be that expensive right. and it doesn't have to be merino um as nice as you know merino is so Use what you want to use, but don't, you know, don't look down on other people for, yeah you know, not being able to use what you're using. or you Yeah, know. don't shame others. Right. Because that excludes a lot of people that could be, you know, they're your audience. Some of the people with huge audiences I see talk about, I'm a yarn snob. I won't use anything with acrylic in it. It's like, well, you know, not everybody, not everybody can do that. Yeah, and yeah. acrylic, you know, some people 
have kids and they don't want to deal with wool for their kids and I can understand that. Um, there's nothing wrong with an acrylic blend. There are plenty of acrylic blends out there that I like. I don't personally like 100% acrylic. Um, although I knit my dog a sweater with it because like, yeah, I'm not going to knit her like a merino <laughs> wool. <laughs> I'm not. Um, there are plenty of people that do and it's adorable. But like, you know, my dog has already outgrown that sweater. So I'm glad I didn't use a nice yarn. <laughs> you know, I mean, kids, they outgrow stuff. And, um, I have nothing against if you want to knit with indie dyed yarn, like super expensive yarn. Um, but I also have nothing against people that knit with the cheaper stuff. Yeah. And I Are you picking black nail polish for nails on my white bed? <laughs> it's maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. That makes it. it matches the room. Though. Yeah. Anyways, we hope that you like our new setup. If you all do, if the sound is good, if everything else is good, we're gonna, that was my phone. We're gonna keep it right here because I think it works. And we didn't need to match. It and happens. It literally always happens. We buy the same shirts and don't even know it and then wear it at the same time. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> um, we hope you've enjoyed it. If you ever have any questions or anything, Feel free to ask us in the comments. We'll try to answer those. Um, but we hope you all have a good weekend. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.